gentle viewer, to the second Coral Finder Toolkit Revision Movie. Use the following slideshow to test your skills while using the Coral Finder. Just watch and pause this slideshow so you can study the test corals. At the end of the exercise, the remainder of the movie runs through the same corals as worked examples. Revision Movie 2 assumes you have viewed and understood the concepts outlined in the entire six-part Coral Finder Toolkit training movie series. Your slideshow starts now. Specimen 1. From the wide shot, we can see Specimen 1 is a large and massive coral. The coralites have sinuous meanders and share common walls. To choose a lookalike page, we'll need to measure the valley width of the coralites. They average approximately 6 millimeters. So let's try lookalike page 8. Okay, so we've got lots of meandering corals here. But by checking the true scale boxes, we quickly come to favour Platygyra, as the valleys of the others are smaller in diameter. But the images of Platygyra seem to show both long and short valleys. That's because the different Platygyra species do vary a lot. Clearly, our specimen is a long valley form. That's okay. Remember, the coral finder summarises the variation of all the species contained by a genus. The important thing is to confirm the distinctive characters. Our long valley platygyra not only has larger valleys, but also ragged edged septa, which also separates it from the evenly spaced zipper like septa of the other long valley genus, Leptoria. Specimen 2. Now we have a medium sized massive coral. Remember, Massive means the coral is roughly equal in all dimensions, length, width, and depth. Using the massive key group, we would now note that it has beautiful rounded coralites with separate walls. These coralites average 5 to 6 millimeters in diameter. So we're off to lookalike page 10. Scanning the true scale boxes, we can eliminate Astriopora and Cyphastria on scale alone as well as their bristly and beaded looks. That leaves us with Favia and Montastria. Note how the character description refers to the type of budding as a way to separate these corals. Let's have a close look. Note the variation in size among these coralites, and how the smaller coralites are crowding the larger, older coralites. That's extra tentacular budding, and this gentle viewer is a fine specimen of Montastria. If you can't remember how to recognize intra and extra tentacular budding, watch Coral Finder Toolkit Training Movie 6 or check out the Jargon Buster on the Coral Hub website. Remember, while it's important to be able to recognize budding, it's just as important to know when and why we care about it. Beginners need only concern themselves with a coral's budding state when trying to distinguish Favia and Montastria. That is, two coral genera with separate walls and rounded coralites. And here's a tip. Note how the coral finder says that Montastria usually, but not always, has extra tentacular budding. Don't be put off by finding the wrong kind of budding. Budding is a messy 3D process over time. Take an overview of the whole colony before making a decision. Specimen 3. Well, comrades, there is no prize for guessing this key group. Let's rush breathlessly over to the large daytime expanded polyps. 
Clearly, we are dealing with one of the two flower-like genera, Alveopora and Goniopora, which, the coral finder tells us, can be separated by the number of tentacles. Go ahead, count them, and make my day. And the winner is... Alveopora. Tip. If you are having trouble counting the tentacles underwater, it's probably Goniopora. Either that, or it's time for a prescription face mask. Specimen 4. So we have a submassive coral with common coralite walls. We could stampede over to the massive key group, but we'd be wrong. Why? Let's have a good look at this coral close up. Note that the coralites are not actually round with common walls, but are more so short valleys. Corals may not have big brains, but they are out to get you every time. But we do have big brains, and we aren't going to take no cheek from no invertebrate. The secret to success is time underwater. Okay, so we're in a short meander, common wall frame of mind. The scale suggests we choose lookalike page 8. Once again, we are confronted by an array of meandering genera, some with short valleys, some long. But once you have checked the scale, there is only one real candidate. Congratulations. It's a short valley platygyra. Specimen 5. Here we have another submassive coral, this time with separate coralite walls. Which key group, I hear you ask? You'll recall that in specimen 4, I steered you away from the massive key group towards the meandering key group because of the subtle valley development. Looking at the coralite shapes in specimen 5, maybe we should go meandering as well. Well, I'm sorry to say, no. By now, you must think I'm some kind of crazy sandwich, but stay with me and I'll explain why later. So let's go massive key group, separate walls, 8 to 20 millimeters diameter, lookalike page 11. Scanning the page, I reject Diploastria, whose coralites are low set cones with polygonal sides. That leaves Favia and Montastria. You'll recall that in specimen 2, we had the same comparison, but at a smaller scale. See lookalike page 10. We solved that puzzle by looking at the budding state, which is described at length in the Coral Finder Toolkit Training Movie 6, and in the Terms section of the Coral Hub. Here we have a textbook example of intratentacular budding, which means this specimen is in the genus Favia. Now, returning to my choice of the massive key group over the meandering key group, can you see how the budding process has distorted the roughly circular favia coralites, giving them a faint valley-like look? Learning the look of these subtleties is what makes coral identification tricky for beginners. But hey, you're getting used to it by now. And in truth, we've already covered a lot of the problem areas. If you are still with me, then you are well on your way to coral identification contentment. Specimen 6. This one is both quick, easy and memorable, because it's almost impossible to see these coralites underwater. So we have branching key group, no axial coralites, coralites less than 2 millimeters, and thus lookalike pages 2 and 3. Just look at how small these coralites really are. Only Samacora on page 3 has coralites that small. Check the true scale box. Underwater, they look like fine sandpaper. And when greatly magnified, you can see their fine, granular texture. Specimen 7. Here we have a coral made from thin plates with prominent upgrowths. I'm going for thin plates with fingers, tubes and columns arising. That's lookalike page 23. Let's study the coralites before we scan the lookalike page. First thing to note is that they are very small, about one millimetre across, and set among a sea of fine skeletal structures. By checking the true scale boxes, we know instantly we can ignore Echinopora because its coralites are too large. We also know that Porites and Montipora are the correct scale. Close inspection of the Montipora skeleton pics of the coral finder 
show that it can have complex bristles and ridges on the colony surface. There are a lot of Montipora species out there, making it hard for the coral finder to do justice to all the textures. So here's another one to add to your mental search image of this genus. Specimenate. Now here's an interesting coral. See how it is domed and unattached. So it would clearly belong to the solitary, isolated or free-living key group. If you are new to the free-living corals, don't worry about the coral finder logic for now. Just open up at lookalike pages 24 and 25. A quick scan of the bottom half of page 25 holds some domed discs with Sandalolitha, Halometra and Zupilis competing for our attention. The lack of easy to see coralite centres and the presence of tall septal teeth combined with the lightly built skeleton to identify the genus as Zupilis. Halometra and Zupilis are interesting in the way fragmentation seems to play a part in their life history. The occasional band of scepter, intersecting at right angles mid-colony, appears to be a regrowth feature. Zupilis is more fragile than Halometra. Specimen 9 Specimen 9 is another clearly free-living genus. Try not to pick up corals or handle them. They have enough problems. With a little experience, you can easily see if a coral is free-living or not. Here, the close-up texture is a giveaway for the many mouths look that will send us to lookalike page 25. Hmm, another easy victory in the war against coral confusion. Herpolitha, with its elongate colony, long axial furrow, and numerous secondary mouths on the colony surface, is another easy coral genus to learn. Note, the elongate disc-like colonies can have both blunt or pointed ends. Specimen 10. Now here is a coral that you could track down using three different key groups from the coral finder. Meandering, massive or thick colonies, or thin plates. Given that the first thing I noticed was the subtle but clear river-like pattern in the close-up image, I'm going to try meandering. For the record, this genus can be massive, thick or thin and crusting, so I'll leave it to you to practice with the other key groups. It's a great way to learn. The close-up not only shows clear, shallow meanders, but also that the coralites lack distinct walls and have septocosti that flow between the coralites. These coralites are small, but they are not tiny. About 2-3 to three millimetres across the valleys, I reckon. Which has me leaning towards lookalike page 7. Always focus on what you can see first. Let's go back to the close-up image before getting in too deep. Look at the scepter. They have a granular, sugary texture. That's good information, because it eliminates Pavona, Leptoceris and Pachyceris. Samocora and Costnerea are the genera with granular septocosti. Remember the septocostate learning group in Training Movie 6? Now it's just a question of scale. Tip. If you can see granular septocosti at all, it's Costnerea. In Samocora, the coralites are so fine they can be hard to see underwater. And here's a trap for young players. If the tentacles are extended, it can hide both the meanders and the granular look and feel. So waft some water over the colony surface to make them retract. <laughs>